I'm happy to have a little bonus time with Robert F. Newkirk, Jr., the author of The Diamond of Life. Uh, I'm so glad we got a little more time to chat because I want to ask you a lot of questions, but one is about, um, we were talking about diversity and so many different kinds of people. Uh, how, how do they, how do all these different kinds of people, all these different kinds of issues come under the umbrella of this book and the principles that you're talking about? Well, the book is the solution in terms of people looking at diversity type issues. But there's one thing that I need to emphasize first before we get into that. And that comes for every individual out there that is learning this. And it's gonna to come to our website at www.robertfnewkirk.com. Receive the book, read the book, and then contact us so that we can help guide you to the next level. This is the tip. The opposite of success is not failure. Society has you to believe that success, opposite of success is failure. So you failed, you have not succeeded. That's an incorrect statement, and I beg to differ. The opposite of success is not failure. The opposite of success is conforming. It's conforming. When you accept your circumstances, even though they don't fit you, you have just conformed to your circumstances. And that's where the lack of success or not being able to succeed or to bring out that inner gift that's within you because it doesn't, it doesn't work when you're just conforming. There are a lot of successful people that actually failed their way to success. <laughs> they kept on failing, failed millions of times because they didn't look at it as a failure. They just got the wrong, wrong outcome. So if I got the wrong outcome, Thomas Edison said, I, I just figured out a way not that this process does not work. And he tried again. And he kept trying until he finally got uh, the venture that he was looking for. You can do the same thing. Just get the wrong outcome. Oh, well, I know not to do it that way. Let me try it this way. The issue is you got to keep it moving. You can't stand still. Conforming is standing still. You have nowhere to go. You're in a stalemate. And that's when life is not the living part kind of just goes and fizzles out and it gets boring. You have to keep it moving. And if you keep it moving, there are going to be some failures along the way, whoop de do. It gets back to what I was talking about, a level five problem. If you're looking at it from a level 10, that level five problem may have caused you to fail. But guess what? We're going to get over that problem and we're going to move on to the next one. And then all of a sudden success comes in. I can say that because my life has lived that as well. I've gone through a whole lot of failures. I've gone through a lot of shortcomings. But it, the genius of intrapersonal, which is one of the most critical geniuses that you can have, because that's the belief in yourself, the belief that you can achieve no matter what obstacle stands in front of you. And we're going to, uh, we're going to succeed. It's just a matter of time. There are two keys to success. That's timing and positioning. Positioning is your responsibility. Timing is God's responsibility. And when that time comes, you have to be ready and be in position so that it just moves and just flows because it's in the will. It's in that passion that you have. It was intended for you. It was meant for you. And nobody else can take it away from you. So that's, the, that's really important here. And, and that just gets you started right there. You're on, you on the move already. So basically, a rolling stone gathers no moss. So just keep finding the next thing, right, to, that you are moving toward, what inspires you next. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so basically, you're focusing on, you're saying don't focus on the problem, focus on the solution. You have to focus on the solution. And, and the thing that where people fall short is that they allow themselves, it gets back to the education thing, is that they allow themselves to stay locked up in whatever environment they're in. They don't go explore, uh, find out what other people, what other cultures, uh, and to understand differences between people. And if you're talking about diversity, that's where the problem lies. Um, I think personally that society kind of is addressing diversity incorrectly. Um, there are two issues that are associated with diversity. First is the inclusion of 
the people that have been left out and getting them in the mainstream. So that's one thing that diversity is supposed to attack. But the other issue is the people in the mainstream being left out, where diversity is a coming together. It's a coming together of everybody. So you have to take the people that weren't in the mainstream before and the people that were in the mainstream, that all of a sudden now, in order to get the people that out that were out of the mainstream, in the mainstream, you're taking away or excluding the folks that are already in it. We need to bring it together so we can come to understanding. Give us an example of that, what you mean by that. Um, it's, if you look at it, uh, I think if we talk about the taboo issues in society, and two of those are racism and sexism. Yes. Um, the issue is you cannot, uh, you, you can't, you don't know what you, you can't understand what you're uh, uh, thinking. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going, let me, let me back that up, Benny. You can't understand what, you, you, can't, you can't control what you don't understand. Right. And the issue is that someone's perspective there are certain ways of looking at things. Things are a certain way. From somebody else's perspective, they're different. Well, instead of trying to understand what the other person's perspective is, instead, I don't want to be bothered with it, so I'll just suppress it altogether. And that's where the isms come in, and that's where society is having the problem. And people, in, based on past history, there's a fear that's still out there to address those problems and overcome it. But we're coming into a new age now that it shouldn't matter. We need to all come together. And uh, one of the experiences that I've had is that I've lived all over. I've lived in 10 different places during this short tenure on this earth. And I have been exposed to different demographics and different types of people. And so now I can go anywhere I need to go and it doesn't matter what the demographic is, I can adapt because I've been in that environment before most people have not, and so there's a fear there because they've never been into an environment with another culture before. And so they don't know what offends them, uh, what's sensitive to them, and so that they can come in and adapt and bring an essence of friendliness versus an essence of foe. Um, that's basically what I'm looking at. So it kind of goes back to your thing about just drop the expectations, let things be what they are, and then get on board and, and adapt, right? Adapt is the key, and uh, you also need to be able to adapt to your environment. If I can adapt to my environment, um, and that's kind of where, if you look at my background, that's why I'm kind of the jack of all trades. I'm an engineer, but also a literature, and here I am, an author and a speaker. So communication is, is good, um, littering and being able to find out information. I kind of consider myself a cross between a connector and a maven because I have the information I've observed for so long and I want to pass that on to other people so that it can change their lives. And that's what our program is kind of built on. And we have been a successful in the programs that we've had in the past in addressing those issues and being sensitive to those types of things so that people can come in from whatever background that they come from and be comfortable in knowing that they uh, are, are the center and they are just as important as anybody else and that they can achieve because they are geniuses within themselves. I was gonna ask you uh, for a last word, but that sounds like a perfect last word. Yeah, look for the genius in yourself. Uh, Robert F. Newkirk Jr. and uh, go to his site, robertfnewkirk.com and check out uh, more information about him and about his book, The Diamond of Life. Thank you so much, Robert, for having a conversation with me, and I hope you all go out and find your inspired self.